Hey, Greg over at DIY RV at Home coming back at you doing some uh, remodel in my bathroom. It's been a long going project. I haven't done a lot of videos on it. But uh, today what I'm doing is I'm trimming out a couple doors that I have in this bathroom. And I thought I'd bring you along, show you along with my son how to, uh, or how I was taught to trim these out. So, we picked a basic uh, trim for this, and when we're doing this, we want to create a reveal, a little edge around the casing. So, what we're going to do is, on this one, they actually had it as a quarter inch. I'm going to keep it at a quarter inch reveal. So, I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to hold my tape up here, mark a quarter inch. On the side and then mark a quarter inch on the top and that gives me where I want to make my cuts uh, this is being more precise since we're doing the finish work we want to keep everything as tight as possible so just on the tape measure up there and just saying oh yeah it's here you can be off by a sixteenth and in the end you have to be doing some silicone work or something like that uh, latex caulking to get that to look uh, pretty tight so next thing I'm going to do is just take the piece of trim, set it where I want it to be, and that mark that I already put up there, I'm going to go ahead and put a little mark on the trim. I'm going to turn that trim back around, and now I want to just put a line, the direction I want this to be cut. So when I do go out to the saw and cut it, I do cut the right direction. Uh, don't want to cut the wrong direction. If you want to be able to reuse the piece, you'd have to use it somewhere else. Um, to use it. So next, I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. I'm going to come in and get my quarter inch. Now I'm going to take my trim, do the same thing, set it in place. using a regular pencil uh, on this versus using a carpenter's pencil. Carpenter's pencil is great for doing uh, the rough work where you can be off a little bit on your lines. This is a more precise mark so that's why I'm using the finer pencil. Again, taking, marking the direction I want to cut. I'm going to go out as a saw, cut these, take you along. Let's go. All right, so we're out here at the chop saw. I've got it set at a 45 degree angle. I want to make sure that I flip it over and look at my line and make sure that line that I scribed on the back is in the right direction, how I got the 45 set up on the saw. Now, when you're gonna do this, what I like to do is I like to get the piece close, bring the saw down, and I will err on the side of caution by being a little long. If anything, I can trim it up afterwards. Now, since I am cutting like this, I want my mark to be on this side of the blade when I cut it. Now that blade, my blade is about an eighth of an inch. So you don't want to cut right in the center of that blade or on the other side because that'll make your piece short. So just remember, my mark's on Right here, I want that mark to be on that side of the blade when I cut it. All right, let me get this lined up and get it set and let's get it cut. Here we go, fingers out of the way. barely touched that pencil mark so I know it should be really good we'll get the other one cut we'll get back inside and we'll get these put on
All right, I got the piece in place. Got it where I want it to be on the line. I'm just going to set a brad in right now. Just let it sit there. So we're going to set our second piece in place where we want it. We're just going to single tack. And let's just let it sit there for a second. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and measure in between the two. I'm going to give myself just a little extra and I'm going to go cut my top piece bring it back in and we'll mark it to put it in place. So right here I've got 37 inches so I'm going to I'll cut my piece to 38 inches and when I do cut it I'm going to use this one as an example. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to want to make sure that I cut this direction on the one side and then on the other side I want to cut the opposite direction so I want to make sure that they're in the proper positions when I do cut them. Alright so I've got both my side pieces put on. I went ahead and cut this down a little bit, getting close, but see it's way too long right now. And I'm just sort of checking my reveal out on this one side. It looks really good. This other side, let's see. That's gonna look good too. So what I can do, make sure these are, you know, where I want them. I can flip this over. Right there, come back in, and I can mark where I want it to be. I'll transfer that line around. So I have the reference up on top for when I go out to the saw. So there it is. So I'll go out to the saw, cut that down, and bring you back. All right. So there we go. We've got the corners perfect. Now, a little bit of the wall kind of rotate a little bit. You might get just a little bit of gap there. And there, what you can do is you can take finish nail and actually shoot from the side and the top to, to suck that in um, or just a very touch of silicone and that will or excuse me latex caulking and that will clean that right up I'm gonna shoot this bring it back show you the finished product now as I go down when I'm shooting this I can move move the casing just a little bit to try to keep my reveal that I want all the way down. Like I say, I'll come back with you. Don't want to make a ton of noise with the nail gun, possible compressor kicking back on. Be back with you. All right, got the trim done. It's actually really tight up here on the corners. It's just that this wood is primed, so you see just a slight line there. Uh, when I come back and fill all the nail holes, I can just run just a touch of latex across that and you'll never see that. Rebuild. Got it set about a quarter inch all the way around. So that's how I uh, do the trim. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. I'll see you on the next video.